All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Lou Kern with Blockchain Co-Investors Syndicate, and welcome to today's webinar uh, with Wire featuring uh, Yanni Gennaros, a Wire co-founder and actually recently uh, CEO. Uh, it's a great story. These guys are a really critical part of the whole crypto infrastructure. And you know, we're super excited to have an opportunity to invest in the company and, and super excited to have Yanni here with us uh, presenting. And we're going to uh, have Yanni present uh, for about uh, 15 minutes. And I'll probably be asking some questions. And after that, then we'll open it up for questions from the audience. So if you have a question, just put it in the chat function and we will actually make you a, uh, uh, we'll bring you up on stage if you'd like. If you don't want to be brought up on stage, but you have a question, uh, then put it in the chat and we'll ask it for you. Uh, and when we bring you up on stage, uh, we'll ask you to open up your microphone and your video so you can ask Yanni yourself as well as any follow-up questions you might have. It's all uh, pretty casual. The idea here is just to hear the story and be able to ask the questions we want. So we're super appreciative that, uh, that Yanni made the time for us today. And with that, uh, I'll turn it over to Yanni Gianeros. Yanni? Great. Thanks, Lou. Thanks, everyone, for having us today as well. Uh, let me just share my screen real quick. I'll just run. Can you guys see my screen or? Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So hey, once again, thank you so much for having us. Uh, so yeah, we've been, you know, uh, like Lou's mentioned, we've been in the space for a bit of time, uh, been uh, since 2013, Mike and I started the company. Uh, you know, we've been as a result of just being in the space for such a long time. You know, we've done a lot of different things and have built different business models and kind of perfected what we have been doing uh, today. I won't go through all the slides. I think everyone has the deck already, but I'll go through some of the key highlights, like as Lou mentioned um, uh, earlier, and and kind of just giving a, a a high level of like what the the key value props that we offer to the ecosystem. So at a high level, I mean, we've been around since 2013, moved billions of dollars in the, the space. You know, we have hundreds of applications building on top of wire, we've raised, uh, in, you know, investment. Um, we've never raised, uh, you know, we raised a, a series of, uh, of rounds over the years. And, you know, we work with both uh, crypto companies, um, you know, traditional FIs, uh, financial services companies and, um, and enterprises. So it all started with kind of the same problems that we all had, uh, you know, we, like building the business itself, um, we found that building crypto applications are extremely hop, uh, extremely difficult. Um, and the reason why is it, it's because, you know, there's a lot of regulatory uncertainty. There's a lot of like, um, there, there's, there, there's not, there isn't a playbook in actually creating a crypto uh, backend feature. So you have to do a wide variety of things from investigating a compliance program, applying for licensing, building payment relationship, the technical integrations. It's actually very, 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 very challenging to actually make, build this sort of stuff. So we found in 2018, we really found uh, a really good proposition to take everything that we built over the past years and, and just offer that as a service. Uh, we offer, you know, with 10 lines of code, you can all, you can fully add people, you can um, build compliant financial applications and, and uh, allow developers to, talk to end users really, really fast. So found a massive uh, value prop there and we've been building at it uh, since. Um, you know, without wire, you have to, like I said, you have to go get banking licenses. You gotta source liquidity. There's like all sorts of UI, uh, there's legal fees. You gotta launch, there's ongoing maintenance after you do it. And these are teams that you just, you know, most, um, you know, developers just don't wanna go out and build. You know, if you're, you're in your bedroom at 1 a.m and you wanna launch a Bank of America, you're not gonna spend two to three years uh, going after this sort of stuff. And that's where we come in. We, we've, we've made that extremely simple um, for developers to actually build out. And uh, within, within a, a few hours, you can actually go and, and build and launch your app. And we, and we do this on, on a fairly, you know, we've been doing this for two years and, and now hundreds of applications rely on us on a day-to-day -day basis. Whether you're a BRD, MetaMask, uh, you know, we have some partners like Pointify, uh, well, a wide variety of platforms now use wire. I think we just crossed a million end users onboarded into the ecosystem. So there's a, a significant amount of companies that rely on wire to build out their businesses. So we're really, really proud of the work that we're doing here. Uh, we sit behind the scenes for many companies 
you know, and there's a good chance if you're buying crypto or using a crypto application that it's actually wire in the back end uh, uh, powering that sort of stuff. Um, and, and ultimately, I mean, we, we, we really do help people change the world and we do this in big and small ways. Um, just like a couple of weeks ago, we helped a company called AirTM uh, unlock some US uh, funds from the US government to send it to Venezuela for COVID relief. They wouldn't be able to do it. It was in partnership with Circle as well, but um, we weren't, they, weren't able, they weren't able to do it without a system like Wire. The funds coming from the US government and they're, we're able, using our APIs, we're able to disperse uh, to thousands of people all over the world, uh, specifically in, in Venezuela, to help them out with COVID relief. So, um, hey, hey, Yanni, can you just maybe, because that's so, that's so interesting. And so I appreciate you, you use yeah. Circle's USDC stablecoin. Yeah, I, exactly. I but what, you know, can, can you explain just what was it that then, you know, how is your API used and to get money to the people? Yeah, so uh, AirTM is built on top of Wire's wallet infrastructure. So the the actual technology to disperse the funds and receive the funds from the U.S. government is kind of where we, um, so we receive the funds from the U.S. government and um, then we're able to disperse out to a wide variety of partners. So um, it's the wallet infrastructure API there. So we do a wide variety of things. I'll, I'll go to in detail uh, all the services, but, you know, we have a full banking as a service API um, that people can build on top of. So it's, 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 it's very powerful stuff. Um, and then we, we, we've done this in the past with CoinList, uh, you know, helping, uh, you know, connect investors to projects or with, and taking care of the payment systems. We've done this with um, kind of Algorand uh, and then also the near protocol. I've helped them in different capacities. So, um, and then we also see a wide variety of like smaller crypto wallets uh, looking to uh, build into the US banking system or build uh, solutions to, uh, you know, send money into the U.S., send money abroad. We have a wide variety, maybe, you know, a few, a few, the dozen um, wallets that are built on top of wire on a daily basis. So we, we really do help people uh, change the world. And, you know, we play a massive role in the crypto ecosystem. Um, our approach has never been to really go um, into kind of like the, um, the, the FIs, that hasn't been our approach. Our approach is like, how do we allow a developer to get API keys uh, to create without needing to chat to a salesperson and uh, be able to start building a Wells Fargo bank uh, or a Wells Fargo competitor in, in a matter of hours. That's been our approach. Um, and we've done a really good job. We haven't had a marketing team or you know we haven't had a, a, a really large sales team um, uh, dedicated to really going after the kind of the the bank banks. Uh, should I take answers right now, Lou? Do you want me to? I see Steve had a question here. <laughs> um, it's okay. Why don't you go through the you know go through the deck and, and then we'll bring them up on stage and okay, uh, yeah, and they'll be able. Okay, to cool. Yeah, yeah, that. absolutely. Um, so yeah, what 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 does that actually mean? So we have you know we have a eight, we've been API first. Um, you know since the since day one when we really started focusing on these sort of uh, use cases been. Uh, API first, uh, we have comprehensive documentation. You don't need to sign up to see the documentation. You just go to docs.sendwire.com. We have everything that you need on, on that. And it's extremely easy integration. We have a bunch of like cookbooks, things that you can get started. And we are really developer focused. We really try to help developers uh, build these kind of use cases in a very compliant way. So that's been our approach. Um, and, then, and then we do have like a UI, uh, which is called Checkout, which is kind of like a fiat to crypto gateway. So if you're not, if you, want, if you don't want to build the API, we have like a, a, a wire hosted checkout page. We take on all the fraud, we take on all the payments, uh, anything related to that, um, to the checkout flow and make it really simple for you to integrate. Um, and diving into that. So this is like, the, uh, you know, checkout product is our fiat to crypto gateway. Um, this, you know, you can accept Visa, MasterCard, Apple Pay, Google Pay. Uh, you can add, you know, you don't, there's no KYC, there's minimal KYC, but you don't have to upload an ID. And within 30 seconds, you can buy crypto uh, and it's instantly delivered and there's no chargeback risk. So it's a massive, we built a massive fraud engine in the back end to uh, kind of build an identity profile for every price, everybody coming through the system. And we've done a really good job in making it a really instant uh, and seamless purchase experience. You can, you can go to like metamask.com and download the like section and, and see how this works. Uh, it's, it's really nice. And you know, hundreds of companies use this kind of checkout experience. For people that are looking to use a API, um, you know, we have, there's three main categories for the API. We have a user's API, a wallet's API, and a transfer's API. Um, 
in the user's API, um, it's how you onboard users in a very compliant way. So do the AML KYC um, and we have a, you know, it's actually free, we don't charge for this. Uh, so if you're, you're looking to uh, add users in, in a compliant way and get a status on if they're a legitimate user, a user's API is a really, really good API to use. Uh, once the user is onboarded, then you can store money. You can custodian fiat and crypto. Uh, we can give them dedicated bank accounts. Um, and then there's also in partnership with a few vendors, we have savings uh, automatically baked into the a wallets API. And then we have a full transfers API. And that's how everything, you can move money from payment instrument, whether it's a card, whether it's a wallet or whether it's a wide variety of like solutions, you can move uh, value throughout all these, uh, you know, from wallets and users into any destination, any currency <laughs> in the world. So that's how we structure the APIs. They're very clean. They're very easy. They're they're designed for developers to use uh, instead of a large. Uh, yeah, they're really designed for developers to use, and and we've, we've seen a lot of good things about them. So um, you can see how like uh, we have like the components. So you can take like an Apple Pay white label, uh, just like. Uh, Argent Wallet has done. If you go through the Argent flow, you can add funds, and within 30 seconds, you can uh, buy die directly with Argent. Um, and then our APIs, although we haven't been focused on it, you know, banks can really go and use our APIs. Um, it's not like our main value prop, but the APIs are flexible for large financial institutions to really go in and use, um, which is really interesting. So. Yeah, and then uh, I won't tie into the coverage and support too much, but you know we, we we're supported. You know, uh, my, uh, this is kind of like a you know we're U.S. A first. Like we we have a lot of coverage here in the U.S. and have like really good rails and, and conversion rates here in the U.S. But we're international as well. We support uh, you know over I think over seventy countries, um, many different uh, funding currencies, and many different payment methods. So um, you know we're not just U.S. focused. And, and on the competitive landscape, we see competition all, all over the space. So we have uh, the kind of the on-ramp solution, which competes with checkout on the MoonPay and Banks does. They, complete direct, they compete directly with our checkout product. We have traditional payment processors like Stripes that kind of compete with our card processing APIs. And then we have other banking as a service uh, providers um, that compete directly with our full scape on the, on the uh, full scope of like services that we offer. Um, on the Moonbase and Banksos, you know, they, they, there's definitely, you know, they definitely, um, we, we went on, on instant, being able to instantly purchase uh, high, high amounts with low friction and on conversion rates. Uh, with both partners, typically partners in this space have onboarding experience. Uh, you have to go through a dedicated uh, page that they own, and it's not really white labelable and customizable. Uh, so our, the user experience of pricing payment methods the onboarding experience, everything around the wires uh, functionality, typically uh, wins on these sort of um, these sort of like kind of partners in this space. We have solutions. That, um, you know, we're we're releasing actually this. Uh, or we're beta testing it right now, but next week, where if you want to purchase more, uh, one things that we we typically lose on in this space is you know we only can support up to five hundred dollars. Uh, while these partners can support up to like ten thousand dollars with a card payment, so we are releasing something next week that um, I'm very excited about. That can kind of compete with that the higher level uh, on those transactions. Card processors, well, we're fundamentally different than most card processors. Uh, we take on all the chargeback risk, so you get risk and fraud baked in within the system. So uh, we we built we're built for crypto companies. Uh, we understand how uh, to process payments for crypto companies. And most of these, our partners don't want to build out their own compliance programs, which is something you need to have when going to one of these pro, uh, one of these partners. For example, we've worked with WellPay in the past, taking us, you know, seven to nine months to get an account with them. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with that. They, they, there's, it's just, it's not, you know, you're not, if a person's trying to change the world, it's not, you know, doing it in seven months just to get a piece of it is not really going to help move the needle. And then there's also banking as a service providers um, and yeah, our full suite of APIs can be directly with them. We don't have monthly service fees. Uh, many of these partners, you have to sign up, uh, pay, you know, twenty to thirty thousand dollars on monthly monthly costs. Uh, there's no, you, you have to. It's a long onboarding experience to get an account with them, um, and you have to usually come with your own licensing. So out of the gate, our banking as a service product 
Um, there's, you can get API keys instantly. Uh, we were built for you to use our compliance module because we're fully regulated and it's really bu built for engine, uh, uh, developers. So uh, I, I feel like we can uh, compete very well uh, against uh, most of the competitive landscape. Yeah, and we have a very simple fee structure, no monthly fees, no integration fees, uh, simple pricing structure where you scale as your transaction scale. Um, and that's it. Uh, I, I, I breezed through that really quick, but uh, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, and, um, you know, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. Sure, that was great. Uh, thanks, Yanni. Um, welcome, uh, my partner in the Blockchain Co Investor Syndicate, uh, Matthew Lamarle. Matthew, you turn your camera on. And uh, you know, you've, you've known uh, Wire and Yanni uh, a lot longer than I have. So, you just want to briefly talk about you know, uh, how you met Yanni and, and what your involvement's been to date? Yeah, thanks a lot, Lou, and great to see you again, Yanni. Uh, there is some back history. Firstly, we've known Wire for a long, long time, or Send Wire as it began. And, uh, and I think as you listen to Yanni speak, you can hear the, the experience, the knowledge, and, uh, and the reality that they are sort of, an, uh, uh, sort of a pearl in the sense that they sit in the middle of a very large set of players and their infrastructure is, is absolutely relied upon by some of the world's biggest crypto players, uh, both today and going forward. So we've been watching them for a while um, uh, Yanni kicked off a round last year, and for full disclosure, blockchain co-investors did invest in a substantial way. I can't remember the exact numbers. It was a bit less than a million, as I recall. And so we are already on the cap table, and a good number of our investors are as well. When uh, Yanni mentioned that there was this sort of bolt-on round occurring, and I think I'm not sure that He's shared uh, any of the specifics about what's actually going on with the round, but we moved very quickly. Lou and I chatted and we said, you know, this could be ideal for the for angel list. Um, and it's sort of a chance to get into Wire, maybe even in the last round. I don't know that for sure, but, you know, uh, Wire has quite a lot of momentum and it's not obvious that they're going to need uh, to do a lot more rounds, but obviously that's Yanni's business. But um, so anyhow, so that's the, in a nutshell, we're already investors in a substantial way. We grabbed an allocation when, when we saw an opportunity. Uh, yet Yanni isn't trying to raise money everywhere. This is a sort of a unique thing. And I, I suspect there'll be a very narrow window. So uh, either you join this one now or you probably will miss it forever. But I'm not saying that for sure because obviously that's Yanni's business, but that's the background. Okay, thanks, Matthew. Uh, and Yanni, uh, ask a, uh, um, I'll get a few questions about the round itself. Uh, notably, it's being led by Stellar. Can you tell us how that came about and, and what Stellar's getting out of it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we're really excited, excited about that. So, um, and we announced that last week, uh, Stellar invested $5 million into the company. Um, and we're really thrilled to have Danielle Dixon, uh, who's the CEO of Stellar, uh, join the board as well. So. Um, and, and she has a, a wide experience of like being the CEO of Mozilla and, and a, lot, a lot of experience in, in, in sort of board governance that she'll be able to bring to the table. Uh, with Stellar, we feel it's a natural fit. So we've been chatting to Stellar for about two to three years now. Uh, it's been a long uh, uh, kind of deal in the making. Uh, there's a natural fit. You know, we, we provide tools, they provide the network and together they can, we, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really good fit in the sense that all their anchors are able to actually leverage our tools and we're able to, you know, you utilize those anchors to expand our network. Um, so it's a natural fit. It, it's just it, they came to us two months ago, and, and really, you know, they have a big push in, in different geographies, um, where all, you know, in in South Africa they have geographies in uh, Southeast Asia, and all those anchors are looking to come to the U.S. Uh, and they saw a natural fit where we can, um, you know, kind of use our APIs as a way to help them get into the space. So these are partners, individual anchors uh, that are you know, localized in, in the regions and they're trying to expand globally. And, and there's, a, a, there's a really good opportunity for us to work together on that and expanding the network. Uh, one of the main, you know, I talk about adding value at Wire all the time now, and there's a four key pillars. And one of those key pillars is building out the Wire network. And that's exactly where, you know, for Wire side, I feel like, uh, and Stellar has built out, you know, a few hundred anchors that we can tap into. And for Stellar side, 
you know, they could add more value by making those anchors even more powerful by using it wires API. Makes a lot of sense. Can you talk about the, the round itself? So this is a convertible note, a convertible yep. at a 20% discount to the next round. Uh, can you talk about what your thoughts are on kind of the timing uh, of the next round and, and any other absolutely. information about the next round you might want to share? Yeah, absolutely. So this is definitely, it came at a good time because we were, you know, we finally hit profitability at the end of last year. And that was the main goal for the previous round that uh, blockchain co-investors invested in. And, um, you know, we, the, the main goal for that was to get to profitability and we did. Uh, and now we're in a good position, you know, to kind of uh, taking a little bit more capital um, and build out the leadership team, build out, um, we have, a, we're only 23 people here uh, in, in um, you know, we're, and we're definitely understaffed. Like there's, there's no question about it. We don't, we don't have a sales team. We don't have no marketing function. Uh, we were, we have a few engineers. Uh, so all across the board, you know, there's an opportunity for us to, you know, bring in a, a sales leader, bring in a marketing leader, uh, bring in a, a compliance leader and uh, really kind of build the structure that when we go into the next round, we can uh, actually be ready to raise a, a substantial round and go for, our, you know, kind of like a growth, a higher growth uh, round. So, it's a really good opportunity for us to kind of put fuel on the fire, build the right building box for us to get to that as series C mark. We raised series B in 2018 and, and our series C would probably be um, later within the next nine months is, is where we're targeting. Perfect, thanks. And can you talk about uh, maybe a little more macro view of the market kind of talk about maybe some of the major changes that you saw occurring in 2020 and what you're looking for in 2021? Yeah, so we, I mean, we made this pivot into kind of like the API infrastructure, uh, the on ramps in 2018, because we saw a big need for this, um, you know, specifically in the DeFi space. We, we realized that DeFi was going to be a, a massive, in 2018, we realized it's going to be a massive uh, player. It's going to be massive in the future of finance, right? So uh, we put all our eggs in that basket to really go after this market and help you know, small entrepreneur, like small companies uh, really get kind of like the compliance infrastructure, payment infrastructure. That's, that was our thesis. And, you know, people thought we were crazy then. Why would we leave? Like, you know, we had highly profitable business lines in the past and, and people thought we were crazy that we were leaving behind them. And, and today you, we've seen, you know, you've seen that unfold. Some of these DeFi companies are doing more volume than some of the largest exchanges in the world. Right, so we've seen the power of DeFi and the DApps and the small uh, businesses really grow over the past two years, and that's only a testament of like kind of like where you know the you know us understanding the space and, and providing value to it. Um, we've definitely you know we're we're going to see increased competition in all across the board. Uh, we have had uh, you know large players like Visa and, and Paxos come in with uh, infrastructure APIs to help big players, but I think we're if we stay true to our vision and really help. Uh, make it as seamless as possible for people to build out applications without needing to talk to a salesperson or without need make it as soft started as possible, then Wire will succeed. Uh, and I, I think that, you know, uh, helping people continue to build out their visions is, is going to be very, very powerful in, in us doing that. And, you know, uh, I know when I was talking to you uh, uh, before, just before we started, you were talking about the hiring spree that the company's on. Can you talk about what the hiring environment is like for a, a company like yourself? It, it's it's fantastic. We've never seen this much excitement. We've seen we see a lot of people for that are uh, in larger companies. Um, in, you know, very very well qualified people uh, applying for uh, you know roles that they could that they should probably shouldn't be applying for. And but in the sense of that, you know, they're they're definitely you know. Uh, apply for titles that are, are probably too small for them in, in a sense, but they just want to get into crypto. And we see this all across the board. I've never seen, you know, within one, we see hundreds of people applying. Uh, it, it's incredible. Uh, it's, it, it really is incredible. Um, but yeah, we're ch chatting to fantastic people. Uh, we're really excited about it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. It's a great time to join a crypto company. <laughs> uh, well, I, obviously Matthew and I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Um, so you know, we, we don't have any questions from the audience. Uh, so I'll ask the last one you know, that I've got. Matthew, you're, you're certainly free to chime in if you've got any. But you know, what do you think is, is, is there anything, as you've told the, you know, told the story you know, lots and lots of times, what's the main thing that you think that investors don't get uh, uh, about WIRE? 
Uh, we do a lot in the space and kind of the messaging of like where wire sits is kind of like where, you know, where's the value prop uh, that wire brings to the table. And I think it's, you know, it's, it, you know, it, it has been, you know, we've done a lot in the past seven years. Like we pivoted from being a wallet to money transfer and kind of the messaging of what we offer is, is all over the place. If you just Google wire, um, <laughs> you, you'll see, see it all over the place. But I think that, you know, what we really bring, really bring is we are the stripe for crypto we make it as simple as like uh pressing a button to get an api key and and start building a wells fargo bank overnight and i think that if we continue seeing that vision um we're, we're going to be extremely successful um and yeah i think there yeah the stripe for crypto is is where we're we're at um we do a lot more than just card processing but it's in and yeah that's um i'd say that's probably <laughs> the biggest conversation I have. I've had it with Matt several times as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, and let me just ask one quick question, but I, I think this has been a good uh, session. And as you know, Yanni, we're gonna, in a very disciplined way, circulate the link to this to all of the people that uh, want to learn about WIRE and that are investors in our circle. So uh, it's been very good for that. You know, FinTech is going through a bit of a frenzy as well. So beyond just blockchain, and we are seeing all of these new ways to exit. So we're seeing direct offerings like Coinbase, and then there's all these SPACs. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it seems like everyone has a SPAC and everyone is trying to get one of the top 50 blockchain businesses to roll into the SPAC. Have you been approached by any SPACs? And is that something that you've even uh, uh, sort of popped up on the radar screen yet? It hasn't, no. We haven't been approached uh, in, that, in, that, in that sense, no. Um, I, I, haven't, I, I have too many thoughts on that. I think it's, um, yeah, it's definitely a, a hot time for in FinTech in general. We see this all across the board on just um, investors, just like the, all the activity happening in the space. But yeah, I, I, we haven't been. Okay, thank you, Yanni. Back to you, Lou. Okay, well, I think that's it, really. Thanks a lot, Yanni. We really appreciate the, the time. Uh, and, you know, again, we'll be posting this up on uh, uh, the, your deal page on our Angelus Syndicate. And, you know, we about, I think, 215 uh, investors now. So we expect it to, to get a lot of viewers. So we appreciate you taking the time. Thanks, yeah. everyone. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.